Hi guys, welcome to this module on Microsoft Word. In this session, we're going to look at how to create indents, tabs, and alignment. So first of all, the easiest and the quickest one, alignment. In this document, at the moment, I have this paragraph, the top paragraph, it's emboldened. I'll just double click on the margin and take the bold off with Control B. Now, to use alignment, you do not need to do that. You don't need to highlight the paragraph. You just need to be in the paragraph. And this is a paragraph group on the ribbon. And these are the four alignment buttons that you have on the ribbon. So as you can see there, left align is pressed in. And the actual diagram or the picture on the button relates to how the text sits on the screen. So you can see there, it's smoothed down the left margin, but jagged on the right. Center aligned jagged either side, right aligned, jagged on the left but smooth down the right and then justified where it spreads it out to make it smooth down either side. And as I move my mouse across these you can see the key commands coming up for each of these features. So first of all left, we're on left, then we'll go center, let's click left, then we'll go center. So that's centering this paragraph between these two margins uh, which is not this hourglass symbol that's just the indent marker which I'll come on to in a minute but this sort of change between dark grey and grey on mine your colours may be different depending on what theme you have in Windows right aligned paragraph like that and then justified which is what newspapers do where it spreads it out a little bit if I click onto this paragraph and select justify you can see that it actually just pull it slightly wider and it sometimes looks as though you've got a gap between words if I put show hide on you can see that there are no gaps it's just one single dot which is what it should be but it's been spread out by using justify so those are the basic alignment options now the key commands um, control L for left control R for right control E for center not C C is copy and control J for justify those are the key commands and to be fair those are the commands that I would actually use now, in addition to those, you can go into this small down arrow, which will get you into the paragraph dialog box, and you have those same options at the top there, left, centered, right, and justified. Now, I would not come into this box to just set left, centered, right, or justified, because there's no point. You've got the features there, or you've got the key commands. When I would use these would be if I have to set a template and I need to do these other things as well. So I then would come in here maybe to set up all these other things. But for now, I don't want to do that. Cancel that off. So that was alignment. The next bit is indents. In my experience, indents and then tabs, which is coming later, are the two of the main causes of stress when people edit in documents because they don't understand how they work. First of all, you need your ruler displayed. Now, when you first get into Microsoft, it doesn't have the ruler on. It comes like that with just a blank space at the top. So to activate your ruler, you click View, Ruler. That will now show you if there are any tabs, which there are not at the moment, or if there are any indents, and there are no indents. These are the indent markers, right indent marker, left indent marker. Now, the left indent marker looks like an hourglass because you've got three elements to it. The top triangle is the first line indent, then a hanging indent, and then the left indent. So you can actually move these separately, whereas that one is just one element, right indent. So back to the Home tab. In the Paragraph group, you have two buttons which give you Increase, Decrease, Indents. So if I click on Increase, Indent, you'll see that the hourglass moves across 1.27 centimeters, which is the default and you can see that in that paragraph. Now, if I click into the paragraph below, you can see that that hasn't applied to that paragraph because I was only in the first paragraph. If I wanted that to apply to all the paragraphs, I would have to select all the paragraphs. If I'm starting on a blank document, I would click that button first and then every paragraph would be indented 1.27 centimeters like so. Now, if I click on the right indent to move that one in, you can manually drag this in, say it's 12. And now if I do justified, so you can see how that would work. 
so justified was on there actually so there's a line there's a right indent but to set a precise measurement rather than just guessing with the with the mouse like this you should really go into the paragraph dialog box which is this little arrow again because in there you can set a precise measurement so I could say um, two and then click OK to that so that's coming exactly two centimeters from the margin because you can see there it's not exactly sitting directly on the top of the 14 or the 15 it's not even halfway it's a bit more but now that is a two centimeter right indent now the left indent can also be split down I can point to the top triangle it says first line indent and I can move that and show a first line indent to the three centimeter mark first line the body is still sitting at the 1.27 meter mark a meter centimeter mark if I pick up the rectangle I can move these together with their split and position them wherever I like so there the main body's gone onto the margin the first line is at two centimeters now to bring them back you need to bring the triangle back so they sit on like so if I move the bottom triangle you get what's called a hanging indent now the the first line is there and there's the hanging indent now where that would normally come in is if I just do a numbered list here for you you can see if I click on one two three there the computer automatically creates a hanging indent when you do that there's the first line there's the body now if you want the numbers in to the margin you just move that back to there and the, now the numbers are in the margin and the body is on the margin that doesn't apply to this top paragraph I'm just going to bring these back together by moving that one back. Remember if I pick up the rectangle, so I'll just undo that for a second. If I pick up the rectangle, I will be moving them both together, but with the with the split already there. So to bring them back together, I either pick up the bottom triangle or the top triangle and move them independently like so. So a hanging indent key command would be control T and control shift t would bring that back now you're not likely to do that but if you have got a hanging indent on it would be cost be because of a numbered list what you're not looking for is people to do stuff like this with a space bar that would be your worst nightmare if you get a document with people where people have done that just to get text to move across it's because they don't understand how indents work and they then make it fit for that time which is great until you have to change something and try to edit it yourself and then you come into problems. So that's um, the indents using the ruler and the ribbon. But as I showed you before, if I go into the paragraph dialog box, you've got indents here. That's the two. I'll put that back to zero. And then on the right there, you've got special first line or hanging. The default distance is 1.27. But just to show you how that sits, we've already done that manually, so you can see that there. Now, Control Q is the key command to reset paragraphs. So if I come down onto these two and do Control Q, it should knock the numbers off. But as always, it does not always reset in this document the paragraph, even though Control Q is the reset paragraph button it should have took that back to the margin but there's no doubt it's no issue you could just do it manually yourself now tabs just going to do control n to get a new document and tabs there are two places you can get tabs one is by just clicking on the ruler itself where you want the tab by selecting the type of tab from there so that's a left tab if I click it again it's a center tab then a right tab, decimal tab, and so on. I'll just get that back to the beginning. There's a left tab. And the other way, if you've got a, a more precise list that you need to create, you can go into the paragraph dialog box. Down the bottom there, you've got tabs. And then you type in the position that you want the tabs. You must go set. So I'm going to go 5 and 10 centimeters. Set. OK. So now if I go name and press my tab key, it will not jump 1.27 centimeters, which is the default tab. 
it will now jump five centimeters and then I'll just type room and then tab again it jumps to the 10 centimeter tab which you can see now on the ruler and I can build up my list now press and enter twice because what I want to do now is put leader dots on my information not on the top line but on the rest so to do that I need to go back into tabs and take the type of leader that I want which is that one I need to do a set and I need to do the same for the 10 centimeters 10 centimeters leader dot 2 set okay and then if I type Dave and then when I press tab this time you get the leader dots one two three extension one two three press enter twice type John tab two 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 tab one one two press enter twice to come off that the tabs are still on the ruler but I should clear the tabs I can manually pull these down which I'll show you in a second but also if I go into format paragraph or paragraph dialog box again tabs you can clear all from this box so from this point on we're back to the default tab if I press the normal tab and keep pressing it you can see that that is just doing the 1.27 centimeters which is normal it's not jumping across and I'll just backspace those two off take the show hide off now to use these tabs say you just want one tab on you can quickly do this look so if I put a tab a left tab because that says left at four centimeters there it is press tab to it and I'm going to type my first and second name so you can see how this works that's coming into the document from the left margin a left tab then I'm pressing enter I'm pulling that tab off changing the tab type to a center tab positioning that at four centimeters pressing tab type in Steve again do a capital letter this time and you can see now that this is going either side of the tab the center tab press enter again pull that one off change it to a right tab and then click at four press tab type Steve Saxton again now you can see it's coming in from the right side of the document and you see this in headers and footers there's a tab by default on the top of a header and footer when you go into it it's usually over this side and now if I press enter on that one I'll pull that one out of the way let go and then the one that um, quite a lot of people don't know that exists is a decimal tab so I'm going to move that across to say 10 centimeters decimal point tab 12.23 enter tab 22.34 enter tab 11.23 enter so what's happening is that this decimal tab is aligning that those figures on the decimal point you will never ever get things lined up by doing the space bar or tabbing manually across you may get most of them lined up but they'll be always the ones that are slightly off especially when you print it out it looks terrible like a snake down the right hand side of the page so if you need to align money use the decimal tab if you need to align just one or two things or say you want a um, if I go back and get a, a left a right tab actually one right but let's put a right tab on at 15 let's say I want dots across the screen I don't want to be going dot 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 all the way across the screen so what I could do is just go into the tab box and on that 15 centimeter one put leader dots set okay and when I press tab to it I should get leader dots now that center one's in the way so if I take that off I'll get leader dots all the way and then you can type wherever you need to type at the end you can also um, do auto correct or add into auto correct um, dashes and dots like this so you just have to press um, one two three and then enter that's already there the line that's a different thing to what I'm talking about now but that's the end of this session and I hope you've enjoyed that session or this session on indents tabs and alignment and I will catch you on the next one thank you for your time